Hello and welcome to the last Friday in November. This is News Desk. I'm Bernice Abu Beidou. And our headlines, Ghana Boundary Commission to replace destroyed boundary pillars between Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire. And authorities at Upper West Regional Hospital worried about shortage of blood at the facility. We've got these and more here in our bulletin. Please stay for details. We're coming to you from our studios in Accra here, uh, Kukum Lemle, also streaming live on DSTV and Go TV. Please, you can also find us uh, via the world using myjoyonline.com. Our details now. The Ghana Boundary Commission will start reaffirmation exercise this week to replace destroyed boundary pillars between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. It's the first joint sensitization and reaffirmation exercise between the two neighbors. Absolutely, Baba has more. of the half Asner Senior High School on parade at Newtown in the Western Region where the event was held. The Ghana Boundary Commission has been engaged in reaffirmation exercise to replace destroyed boundary pillars with Togo. The joint reaffirmation exercise to replace all destroyed boundary pillars with Ghana's western neighbors, Côte d'Ivoire, will begin this week. Speaking at the joint sensitization program, National Coordinator of the Ghana Boundary Commission, Major General Yuman Okotia, said a joint inspection of the international maritime boundary with Côte d'Ivoire would take place in March. As a lighthouse will be constructed in the area to align with the land boundary terminals, which serves as a guide for the maritime boundary between the two countries. We are appealing to Côte d'Ivoire that next year, March, the Côte d'Ivoire Navy should come and we will have a joint inspection on our maritime boundary. Going further, we would also be conducting, as I mentioned, another inspection in March. The first inspection was organized in April this year. Future joint inspections with Côte d'Ivoire will help to, to, to have the collaboration and cooperation that we have been seeking over the years. Major General Imanokocha says the team engaged in the boundary reaffirmation exercise will be introducing new types of pillars which are different from what were used in the colonial era. What are the reasons for reaffirmation? We will be introducing some new types of pillars. First of all, the main pillars will not be like the colonial type of pillars. There will be new type of pillars that the tanker teams will decide and agree. We will also be introducing intermediary pillars. Apart from intermediary pillars, we will be introducing border crossing pillars. Where there is a border post, there will be a pillar there that will guide the Ghana Immigration Service of where the boundary location is. We are hoping that in future, the a lighthouse and a monument will be jointly built between Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire at the pillar as a symbol to show that that is the maritime boundary on land running into sea. Western Regional Minister Kwabu documents and says the replacement of the boundary pillars or reaffirmation exercise contributes to regional peace and stability. This exercise does not only uproot the principles of good neighborliness, but also contributes to the maintenance of regional peace, stability and development. In addition to the technical aspects of our mission, the joint sensitization effort here in Newtown and its Aurora counterpart are also equally significant. This engagement with the local communities illustrates our dedication to transparent and inclusive boundary management. Executive Secretary of the National Boundary Commission of Côte d'Ivoire, Dika Lydia Konati, is happy with the progress of work by the two countries. Uh, to speak to the, to the population, so that it can uh, help our experts to do the, uh, the job, to do uh, all the activities. 
Representative of the GIZ African Union Border Program, Ms. Valerie Nenanik, lauded the Ghana Boundary Commission for its work in creating an atmosphere of peace. On behalf of the German government, I would like to commend the Boundary Commissions of both Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire for their exemplary show of cooperation towards good border governance in their respective countries. There were various stakeholders at the event, including community members and traditional leaders. The traditional leaders declared their support for the reaffirmation exercise and pledged to cooperate. Now, head of the Ghana Boundary Commission, Major General Emmanuel Kotia, has been sharing some more details of their work on the AM show. There were various subjects that were discussed. And one of the subjects that, were, that came up was the mechanisms of setting up the frameworks for national boundary commissions. And if you look at the mechanism, the mechanisms include having legal framework. Most of the countries don't have a dedicated law like we have an act of parliament that establishes The Nigerians have an act of parliament that establishes it. So that is the beginning of it. So most of them agree that they need to carry that first and they need their political actors to understand the dynamism and where to start uh, from. The other issue is that, you see, the issue of boundaries, especially international boundaries on the maritime and land, and land from, has, uh, it's, it's more of international. So there is a need for the collaboration with the various ministry of uh, the state to collaborate with the various ministries of uh, foreign affairs. Where are we doing very well? So we, we had a slog for a director for the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs to lead a discussion on the relationship between foreign affairs and boundary commissions. And the outcome in that respect was also very interesting. And they got to know that there is a relationship. The start point is for them to even have that relationship with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, apart from the legal frameworks and various aspects that they need to set up. The other aspect is that we had them educated on geometrics and survey on land and maritime boundaries. And let me mention a special of geometrics. It's very interesting that so many people do not understand the laws and mechanisms that is associated with maritime boundaries. So there was the need for them to be brought up in that dynamic because they are there, but they don't understand that those dynamics. And it was very insightful. So they have agreed that there are a number of conferences that each country, state parties are supposed to attend at the UN level, at the at various international forums. And we came out with those ideas and I told them that the experiences Ghana we have uh, really uh, had so far as attending these conferences were concerned. Another interesting dimension was gender mainstreaming around boundary commissions. Now, we realize that most of the people that you'll be dealing with along the borders, especially the deprived communities, you have a lot of women and children who are really in that category. There was a need for them to be updated in that sequence and for them to come out with strategies so far as cross-border cooperation is concerned. Then the African Union Convention on Cross-Border Cooperation was also another thing that So we had a representative for Africa who came and gave highlights of it and the need for all the countries to associate themselves. But one of the key highlights was that there was a need for African Union and it was to bring this topical issue for a, for a head of state meeting, discussion at the head of state level, so that the importance of boundary commissions would be highlighted. Away from the boundary reaffirmation exercise, a medical laboratory scientist at the Upper West Regional Hospital, Victor Derry Nitori, is worried about the shortage of blood there. He says the situation has made it difficult for emergency cases to be treated. He spoke at a blood donation exercise held in Wa as part of the 20th anniversary celebration of the National Health Insurance Authority. Rafiq Salam has more. According to a medical laboratory scientist, at the Upper West Regional Hospital, Derek Victor Mwintori, the regional hospital for some time now, has a deficit in their blood bank. The number of persons who need blood has outnumbered the blood available at the bank. We are running at a deficit. So what happens is that because we don't have blood in stock, people who come 
and their relatives come to donate. When there's an emergency, we give those blood out and then we ask the other relatives to also come and replace. We don't have blood in stock. So if there's an emergency, it's always a dying person. Just as it is everywhere in the country, blood is very essential, but getting it is, is problematic. And to our side of the, of the country, there are a lot of viral infections around. We have this HIV, HIV, which are very predominant in our, our settings. So many people come willing to donate, but because of those viral infections, they are disqualified. And our women are always very willing to, but because of their menstrual cycle and then their hemoglobin level as the month goes by, they are also disqualified. So in actual fact, it is, it is dying. We just need help. He commended the National Health Insurance Authority, NHIA, for initiating the blood donation exercise as part of the authority's 20th anniversary celebration. So really, really help because as we are getting, even if we get 100 pints of blood, by the end of next week, everything would have been gone. Because we are the referral center, we take cases from all over the region and even beyond. So because of that, the blood is always on high demand. So if we don't get constant supplies, the patient relative replacement is not helping us because most of the people are coming from so far. And then it is difficult for them to actually transport people from where they are to the regional hospital blood bank for the donation. So when they come, it's always difficult to get the blood for them. So we are actually running on a, a heavy deficit at the blood bank. We are not having enough blood for the patient who comes. Scores of students of the World Technical Institute, officials of the NHIA, and some members of the public took part in the exercise. It was held on the team, 20 years of care, one pint at a time, donate for life. Our power Spinal director of the NHIA, Samuel Lobe, says the blood donation exercise is a clear demonstration of the commitment of the authority to serve the people of Ghana. To demonstrate further how committed we are to protecting lives and guarantee financial risk protection for everybody resident in Ghana. And you know, whoever that is ready to give you blood is simply saying that if I have life, I will give it to you. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Now, the president of the Bono East Regional House of Chiefs and Paramount Chief of the Yeji Traditional Council, Pima Pim Iyao Kabra, said the faith has charged the Regional Security Council to expedite steps towards resolving the dispute between the Rangara and Mo communities in the Kintampo North Enclave. This follows a recent conflict between the two ahead of this year's Kurubi Festival, which led to the death of one person, Anasabit Hasmo. The traditional ruler who doubles as the paramount chief of the Yeji Traditional Council and the president of the Bono East Regional House of Chiefs, Pimam Pim Yao Kagbe, said the fifth charged the Regional Security Council headed by the Bono East Regional Minister to fast track its conflict resolution measures within the Kintampo North Municipality to help prevent what he described as a tribal conflict between the Wangra and more communities in the area. This kind of uh, tribal uh, issue it used to happen. Tribal issues are always erupted during dry season. Just like this case, Mokis, uh, Kintampo case. Uh, the way it is now, if the RISEC should not double their steps, it will be escalated. And we'll find it difficult to bring it under control. His call comes after an earlier clash between the two factions led to the death of one person in the build-up to this year's Krubi festival. Pimam Pinyakakbe said the fifth want the involvement of the military in the region's quest to ensure a lasting peace in the Kintampo area. So if the RISEC is trying to do it and they are facing challenges, they should try and then uh, consult the military so that they will be added to police 
so that the reinforcement will be able to control the, the issue of uh, the, the, this issue. He further warned that the conflict has what it takes to spill to other parts of the region, noting that it goes beyond a mere chieftaincy dispute. So uh, what we are seeing, we should not joke with it because it can spread all over, not in Bono East alone. So comfort zone, especially comfort zone, Kentampo seems to be a comfort zone some time ago. So my uh, advice is that the regional minister should rekindle his efforts to have this military, in addition to the police, to combat the situation. If not that, uh, we will not, we'll not, we'll not find ourselves in a, a better situation. There is, however, a relative calm in the area with security enhanced in the municipality ahead of the climax of the Krubi Festival, which is slated to take place on the 26th of November this year. Anna Savit, Joy News, Teaching. Now, the start of the third day of debate on the 2024 budget degenerated into a heated argument when Minority Chief Whip Governor Kwame Abuja claimed MP Fire Aso West Wogan Lidi Al Hassan did not vote for Dr. Baumia during their party's presidential primaries. Mr. Abuja also claimed the majority leader was focused on campaigning to be selected as Dr. Baumia's running mate. Here's a wrap of the day's debate on the budget. <laughs> with the bank today. That is the third day we heard from the MPP MPs clashing with the minority chief who had argued that Osechi Mensabonsu was campaigning to become the running mate to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. We also heard from Lydia Al Hassan who took exception to claims that he did not vote for Baumia in the MPP presidential primaries. Over 40% of you rejected him, yet you want him to be the one giving us the future. In fact, did you, in fact, he lost in the constituency, Honorable Lydia. So what is the point? Did he not lose in the constituency? He lost. He lost even uh, Honorable Afenio's constituency. You and him didn't vote for him. As for majority leader, he probably voted for him because he wanted to be running. But you didn't vote for him. That there is no contest for the position of a running mate. And I'm not, I'm not involved in campaigning for running mate position. It is an attack on me and I want him to withdraw that now. I am serious about this. You cannot do this to me on the floor of the house. We are, I take serious objection to that. And you better, you cannot start the campaign here on the floor of the house. It is serious and I want you to withdraw it now. But the substance of Kwame Abuja's argument was on the rural sector. Listen. The majority leader has served this country for a very long time. In this house, I was one of those people who stood and supported the bill to, to pass an agreement for a loan an agreement to build a, a Swami interchange. And we cautioned that whilst we do this, the government will do the neutral. Mr. Speaker, the fact remains, as we speak, there's evidence of demonstrations against a very sick fact. He's, you are the only person senior to him in this house. In his constituency, as we speak, the Swami Interchange project is not going on. Is it true or not? As the debate continued, we heard from the Minister for Lands and Natural, who provided some answers on claims that government was selling off lands and properties belonging to the Parliament of Ghana. Mr. Speaker, I want to submit to this house a house of record, and I want her to capture it, that my checks at the Lands Commission suggests that the clerk of parliament at accommodation or residence was sold in 2015 and not 2019. Dr. Nana Ufuye, who is the chairman of the health committee, provided an update on Agenda 11 hospitals, which is being constructed across the country. At Chimansa District, of Mercy, we have done 62.1%. Birim South, we have done 61.1 percent. Ewutu Senya, 61.1 percent. Wasa West, 61.1 percent. Aguna is 60 percent. Ifijak Abbey North, 60 percent. And in Power, Asin North, Nanto, 60 percent. Mr. Speaker, just about 33 of this. Cancel all the achievements of access. I'm talking about access. Universal Health Coverage is talking about the where. The where. It's not building UGMC in Accra. 
and reach hospital only in Accra. Galapse also featured in the debate when we heard from Dr. Abdul Rashid Papu, who claimed that government is not committed to the fight against illegal mining. He referenced that joint news hotline documentary done by Rasta Tassari Donko. The speaker today, land is a sad story in Ghana. If we watch Erasus Asari, Donko's projections, his analysis on the land, his report on the land on joint news, the speaker, you will weep for Ghana. The rivers are going, the lands are destroyed, even reserve areas which the presidency, the president had marked as no-go areas, red lines. You know, speaker, they are mining in those areas. If anything we've seen in the last three days is anything to go by, it clearly shows you that the debate is turning away from the budget and there is more political issues that is being discussed. The Speaker of Parliament has cautioned MPs on both sides to stick to the budget and not do politics. Reporting for Joy News, Kuku Asante, Parliament House, Accra. You're watching News Desk with me, Bernice Abubedulansa. Now, Magdana Aviation has been granted an official air operator certificate by the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. Officials of the authority believe uh, this grant to the local operator will help the company expand in order to create substantial job opportunities. There's more in the following report. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, GCAA, the regulatory body overseeing civil aviation activities in Ghana, on Tuesday, November 21, 2023, welcomed Magdan Aviation into the commercial airline sector by granting it the Air Operator Certificate, AOC. During the presentation ceremony, the Deputy Director General in charge of technical at the GCAA, Daniel Aqua, commended the Magdan Group for its unwavering dedication to excellence and significant contribution to the logistics industry. Magdan Aviation Limited is officially certified to I mean, operate as an airline, but is doing charters, private charters. It's not a scheduled airline, but it's doing private charters. Um, a private jet, as well as um, another business aircraft, which is a propeller, but its performance is as good as a, a jet aircraft. We have to do due diligence, take Magdan Aviation through the necessary certification process. We have a five-phase process, and Magdan has been able to satisfy all the five phases. From today, Magdan can operate, I mean, illegally. In the past, there was some form of um, arrangement yeah, that is also allowed within the industry, but that doesn't make it a full Ghanaian airline. But from today, it's a full Ghanaian airline that can operate without any problem. In response to the license grant, Chief Executive Officer of the Magdan Group, Daniel McCauley, conveyed his profound gratitude to the GCAA for its support and guidance throughout the certification process. He revealed that his company currently operates three jets from the terminal and pledged to introduce an additional two cargo planes in support of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area AFCFTA under the ongoing Guided Trade Initiative. Mr. McCauley emphasized that the granted certification will significantly contribute to Ghana's economic development. Carlos Galoni, Joy News. Now, a study by Caritas Ghana, a Catholic faith-based organization in four communities, has revealed that land grabbing by multinational companies, traditional, uh, traditions and customs are inhibitions to women in, for land acquisition in Ghana. They say this could affect food security in the country if not checked. These revelations came to light when the organization presented its findings in the four communities in Nkwanta South Municipality, Peter Senu has more. Women access to land in this community is not so easy. Most of the women are not able to acquire lands on their own. They have to depend on their husband's farmlands. Or if you are lucky enough to inherit a land from your parents, then you have land to farm on. But if not, unless your husband... Iris Kofi, a member of the research team, bemoaning the challenges women face in the acquisition of land in rural communities. 
Land grabbing by multinational companies has been cited as an increasing phenomenon where local people are often hoodwinked into dubious contracts that would enstrain them in their own land. One of such companies cited by residents at Breonias in the Quanta South municipality is Volta Red Farms at Fanchenico. They have accused the owners of the palm oil producing company for not paying the right amount for the 3,715 hectares of land acquired since 2009. Per the agreement, $5 was supposed to be paid for a hectare per year. This, Reverend Father Pius Biamse believes, is an abuse on the residents and landowners in the area. For me, for, it is an abuse or extortion. They just took it that the people don't know their rights. They don't know their land rights. If you calculate the value of uh, that land, one hectare, it is not five dollars. Even today, today that we have the dollar a little bit high, it means that they are taking one hectare for 60 cities per year. Why should they give the land out for 60 cities per year? So it, we cannot say that it's not even adequate. It's, the, it's pure extortion. According to the residents, the promise to put up a clinic and some social facilities in the area is yet to be fulfilled by the company. Innocent Denku is one of the residents. He wants an intervention so that proper contractual agreement is reached for them to have their full benefits. Some people have developed cocoa farms were there. Some people are already doing their palm plantation in their uh, uh, small way. But when they came, they tried to destroy all these things uh, and they asked that they will pay compensation. But the compensation never came. They have not paid any compensation up to date. I have other lands above that land. And I cannot go there because I can't pass through their, uh, their farms. They will not allow me to pass there. Even if I have any property like uh, trees and other this, which is not in the form of agreement, when I go there for it, they won't accept you to go for such a thing. And it will be a fight between you and the security men there and the company owners. Reverend Father Dio Doné Davon speaks for the research team. He tells us why they conducted this research. For us to be able to appreciate better what is happening, we have visited some communities where we had a survey um, talking to people to understand the general awareness of the, um, the land rights we have and also to see whether women and the youth uh, having common access to land. Um, so it is out of this that we realize that there was more to it. We have done some work on land grabbing already in the past. So it was not, it was not new to us to realize that even in 21st century Ghana, uh, a number of multinationals are taking advantage of the ignorance of the people, taking their land in larger proportions, and the people are not benefiting anything from it. The company has declined an on-camera interview on the matter, but has also denied all allegations leveled against it. As of the time of taking the shot for this report, joining can confirm the extension of service cables to Fanchinico, where the farm is located. Peter Sen for Joy News. Now, the Volta Regional Secretariat of the Urban Roads has commenced the implementation of a one-way scheme in the capital hall. The scheme, which was a component of the Sokode Hodo Carriage Road project, has seen three major roads converted into one-way traffic roads. For Kwame Asari has more. Following the completion of the structural works of the Sokode Hood Dual Carriage Road project, there have been changes in the flow of traffic in the Volta Regional Capital Who The Accra Sokode Hood stretch remains a two way road, while Go to Civic Center Junction on Independence Avenue have been converted into a one way road. Similarly, Go to High Court Junction and High Court Junction to Vodafone Junction become a one-way road. The High Court Junction to Residency remains a two-way road. This also applies to the High Court Junction to Stadium Junction and Independence Avenue, KK House to Ola Traffic Light. Edward Annan is the Volta Regional Director of Urban Roads. You are from Accra, you do mandatory turn right, you hit on the third avenue to the High Court Traffic Light. Then you turn left on the VRCC road to the Vodafone Junction. At the Vodafone Junction, the Independence Avenue is a two-way road. 
So you can either go uh, to the KK House direction or to the left, uh, the uh, Civic Center direction. Then if you are from market to go to maybe Accra, then you take the Togbe Afede road. The Togbe Afede road, it will be two directional, one way. You, you now cannot come down. So if you, you get to go and you want to go to BRCC, then that is where you do the left end, where we have the exclusive left end. But those going to Soko there to Accra and the rest, you just hit on the, the dual carriageway and then off you go. He explained that the traffic management was undertaken to ease congestion at major intersections in the central business district. Yes, the, the need is to for pedestrian safety and then the, uh, traffic safety and then to ease congestion. You see, if we, we take all the traffic down to civic center, you go there, then the place will be uh, choked. But as it is now, somebody do the mandatory turn to the old traffic light, can decide not to even go to uh, uh, BRCC road. You go straight to a uh, stadium. You, you understand me? And then the same traffic, if it gets down to the uh, Vodafone Junction, will be dissipated in the sense that some people will take right to go to uh, KK House and, and the rest. However, the road is yet to be fully completed as the government is looking for funds to fix traffic light at two junctions, beautify the median, and properly connect some intersections. Traffic light, we, we hear my two places for traffic light, PWD Junction and then the Y Junction. I hope you know the Y Junction. Y Junction, get into Togo Affairs area. Uh -huh. Where? So called the Loki. Uh -huh. These are the two areas. And then we are thinking of street lighting. It's, it's, uh, we are seeking additional uh, funds to do those, those, those things, which is in the pipeline. You understand me? Road users are advised to duly adhere to the traffic signs to ensure sanity on the roads. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, who. Let's do some politics now. A pro-new patriotic party group, Hohoi Dr. Mahmoud Baumia Volunteers, has been launched to enhance the electoral fortunes of the governing party. The group says it will deploy some strategies to propagate the goodwill of the NPP and its presidential candidate to the voting population in Hohoi and the Volta region. Here's another report by Fred Kwame Asare. The general purpose of this group where DMB volunteers is to support His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to become the next president of Ghana. To achieve this purpose, here are the cardinal objectives with their accompanying strategic blueprint. Conduct research for informed decision making. To gather, analyze, and disseminate relevant data, information that will enable us to make informed decisions and connect well with electorates effectively to drive home DMB's presidential feat. Establish a research team to conduct comprehensive studies on key issues affecting Ghana, or where to be specific, such as the economy, healthcare, education, and infrastructure. This research will serve as the foundation for Dr. Baumier's campaign and marketing. Increase voter awareness. Organize educational campaigns across institutions in the constituency. Organize town hall meetings and door-to-door -door outreach to inform the communities about Dr. Baumier's well research policies and plans, backed by credible data and evidence. Recruit and train volunteers, including those with strong understanding of research findings, to actively engage with their communities. These volunteers will be equipped to effectively communicate Dr. Baumier's vision and research-backed policies, thereby fostering a sense of trust and credibility among voters. We are resolute and committed to our agenda. To the good people of our constituency, we are using this opportunity to humbly invite everyone to join us in this historic journey of success. Together, it is possible. 
Now, the overlord of Dagbong, Yana Abukeri II, has donated food items to support flood victims in Mepe and Wipe. He says this is his kingdom's small way of supporting victims who have lost livelihoods to the floods. Martina Bugri reports. Over 39,000 people have been displaced following the Akosombo Dam spillage, whilst over 12,600 residents of the North Town constituency have been affected. It is estimated that about 1,500 houses have totally been destroyed, whilst 53 schools have been affected. The donation, according to the overlord, is his widow's might to support the victims. In a speech read on behalf of the Yana Bukhari the second by the chief of Zangbalo, Na Dr. Yakubu the second, called on the relevant ministries to tackle the situation holistically. We also call on the relevant ministries to tackle this situation holistically, as this extends along the Volta River up to the north, especially the Savannah region. The flooding of Bupe in the Savannah region seems to be an annual event that seems to be solved once and for all. The continued yearly loss of properties by the residents is unacceptable, and we need to act now and avert a petition of it come next year. I know the government is doing its best, and so are several organizations and individuals to contain the situation. I pray that we don't get tired of helping until everyone is out of danger and life returns back to normal or near normal. My special commendation goes to you, Honorable Ablakwa for your untiring support to your communities. Your reward is for the good luck. The Member of Parliament for North Tong, Samuel Okujaso Ablakwa, who received the items on behalf of the people, said they were touched by the kind gesture of the overlord. He assured the chief that the donation will be given to the affected people. We are absolutely appreciative of this kind humanitarian gesture. We also want to use this opportunity to assure His Royal Majesty that the items that he has put together, these relief items, will go directly to the beneficiaries. We give him fullest assurances. There will be no diversion. There will be no hoarding. There will be full transparency and accountability. Togbe Azagla the fourth, who was part of the delegation, said they would continue to advocate for support and would also put in strategies to ensure that when support is withdrawn, they will be able to handle the situation. It's going to, it's going to be a fight. Uh, it, it is not going to be very easy for us because... Uh, when we go to some circles, they don't give us the hope. We, 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 we don't get the hope that very soon we shall recover. So what we are doing is to keep on advocating, appealing to people that we think can help us. That is what we can do for the moment. Maybe, maybe uh, in some few, few months to come, we'll be adapting strategies. When we adapt this and we want to get in a result, we have to get and that's what they end until we win. If it's not over, it's not over. Member of Parliament for North Town said they were going to organize crash programs and mock to help the students catch up with what they have lost. We are also initiating our own alternative housing arrangements so that we can relocate some of the people in the camps and the, the, the students can return to school. And then we'll have a crash program organize special mocks and all of that, bring in special teachers, uh, teachers who have the expertise at organizing crash programs and helping the students to catch up. We intend to do that. Um, then you are also concerned about compensation, uh, resettlement. I've, I've been talking about that. I have uh, uh, actually even filed a question, an urgent question to the Works and Housing Minister. He said it was crucial for government to take advantage of data available and replace people's certificates and other valuables that were lost. Some have lost certificates, some have lost money. You know, if you are seen focusing on only one item, people may think that you're only interested in your, your re-election. You know, you just want to be re-elected, so you have left all the other valuables, probably things even more valuable, 
and you are talking about voter ID card. So if you have noticed, I have really uh, stayed away from specifics. But I think that it is absolutely crucial that the data which is available is requested by government and there has to be a conscious effort to replace everything that has been lost, at least what is replaceable. You're watching News Desk with me, Bernice Abubeidulansa. Coming up shortly, we've got business news updates for you. Kindly stay. extremely busy. Work. Traffic jams. Meetings. Conference calls. Luckily, our mom is here to take good care of us with day-by-day -day baby and day-by-day -day kids and their naturally active ingredients. Our skin is hydrated, soothed, and protected all day long. Yes. Banana. We should try it, especially my banana. Your Superstation Love 99.5 FM in partnership with the brilliant minds behind your favorite cod series. Kitty Jam vs. Makola comes to your latest comedy master, Banana and Melon Movie. Meet Henry, a man on a do or die mission to win the hat of his lover, Afi. But Afi seems to have other plans. Are you an error? Yes, Afi. Oh, oh, Afi, you're lucky. I'm lucky. Yes, I'm looking for an error. For an error. Starring the incredibly talented Louise Lamis, the fantastic Atadazi, and the lovely Isabella Etona, comedian Kweku 40, and many more. Don't miss the grand premiere in Kumasi on December 2nd at the CCB Auditorium, Ken USD, and their two show times, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Tickets are available for just 60 Ghana CD single and 100 Ghana CDs couple. Tickets are available at Front Desk of Love FM, Poker Trading Supermarket, Adum, IC Cup, Ken USD, Commercial Area. Sponsors. One, two, give me the dance. Let's go, sir. Hello, with everybody for you. I did just shake below. What is the one your favorite TV game show, Step Up, is back with another amazing season. This time, we are stepping up with Syntex Tank. Step Up with Syntex Tank will see contestants answer questions of their choice and win over 6,000 Ghana CDs cash prize weekly and other products from our sponsors. This season, viewers at home should watch out for the Syntex Tank question of the week. Be the first to answer correctly via WhatsApp or send SMS to 050-833-8888 and win incredible prizes. The person who answers most of the weekly questions correctly and fastest gets a 65-inch Samsung TV at the end of the season. Step up with Syntex Tan, showing on Joy Prime every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Sponsored by Bell Eyes, MTN Momo, Angel Cola, powered by Syntex Tan. Joy Prime, your ultimate experience. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the business segment on Joy News Desk. With me, Pius Kojo Baka, head of department at Gimpa Faculty of Law, Lomnuku Alija, has called for a more competitive process in tendering and procurement of power solutions in the energy sector. According to him, lack of competitive process has the possibility of making energy transmission more expensive with consumer bearing the brand. He spoke to Joy Business at the launch of his book, Ghana Energy Law and Policy, Electricity, where he explores the framework governing the energy sector with a focus on electricity. Per capita consumption at peak demand for electricity is currently less than 4,000 megawatts. 
forward. This is relatively low compared to other developing countries. Increasing access to electricity, especially for industry, is a necessity to drive economic growth. Also, procurement processes have been surrounded with a lot of controversy. In his book, Ghana Energy Law and Policy, Electricity, Lom Nuku Ahija details a comprehensive and well-researched exploration of the legal and regulatory framework governing the energy sector with a focus on electricity. He spoke to Joy Business. The book, as I mentioned, it's uh, the energy sector is one of those sectors that is heavily regulated, um, very intricate. There are many dimensions of it. And so I think that putting together this book enables us to have clarity. So I've tried as much as possible to write in very simple, straightforward language, uh, breaking down the various components of the energy sector so anybody who picks up the book can read and understand how the sector works and how it impacts our lives he called for a competitive process in the procurement system to enable varied solutions and competitive pricing in the energy sector how we procure power today we don't have a competitive process actually for uh, uh, procuring power so essentially what we've done over the years is for developers to approach with proposals and different uh, off-takers, mainly ECG, signs on to these agreements and based on whatever terms are agreed, eventually the cost is passed on to consumers. But if we did have a more competitive process, which enabled um, different solutions to be provided to meet particular needs in the energy sector, I believe we'll have more uh, efficient power plants, we'll have more competitive pricing and many other things. And so when anybody picks up this book, I believe they'll have all these uh, things covered. Former Chief Executive Officer of the Volta River Authority, Engineer Kirk Kofi, called for the utilization of excess generation to drive industrial growth. And as I said in my, my, my review, um, the per capita consumption of electricity in our part of the world is still low. It has to go up with more industries, more utilization of electricity, and that will help uh, um, move us from the, the, the class we have as a developing country to a developed country. Close to 70% of Ghanaians are considered to be financially stressed, while two out of three Ghanaians have no retirement or contingency plans. This is according to Old Mutual Financial Services Monitor, which is an annual survey into the financial behaviors of Ghanaians. Here's more. According to the survey, 64% of the Ghanaian working population are considerably financially stressed, with 72% of this number found among the lower income group. Also, about 40% of Ghanaians have the burden of supporting both children and adults dependent. The report also stated that almost 50% of Ghanaian are engaged in auxiliary jobs to support upkeep, while one out of three respondents say they are saving towards retirement. Vuyokazi Madube, Head of Knowledge and Insights at Old Mutual, has been speaking on the sidelines of the launch of the Old Mutual Financial Services Monitor, which is an annual study into the financial behaviors of Ghanaians. The first is that people are incredibly financially stressed in Ghana. People's income has not changed or gotten less in the last year and a bit. Um, so 78% of people are saying that their income has stayed the same or actually reduced, which means they have less money in real terms. And then finally, we see 61% of people in Ghana dipping into their savings every single month to make ends meet, which tells you yet again that there is a very real challenge from a money and, and access to money and access to being to funds to be able to make ends meet. Responding to the findings of the report, economist and lecturer at the University of Ghana, Dr. Patrick Assuming, called for deepening awareness in the formalization of the informal economy. People don't really understand the benefits of the formalization. So I think some education, general education about for small businesses about the importance and the benefits will help. But like I also spoke about, I think making the process simpler and easier, easier to manage by small businesses. Because, um, you know, if, 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 a private, if, a, if a sole proprietor has to leave their business behind for even an hour, 
just so that they can go and sort out the registration process. That can be a huge disincentive for registering. Chief Executive Officer of Old Mutual Life Assurance, Tavon Biza, stated that Old Mutual is committed to providing tailored retirement solutions for customers. So the products help because firstly they help you to plan adequately for that retirement so that when it gets there you actually have enough money. And then after you get to retirement, because you know even when you look uh, at our own Ghanaian market, we have our tier 3s. And it's day two of the Ecobank Join News Habitat Fair happening live at the Accra International Conference Center. And this is where we'll cross over to Maxwell Agbagba. We some standby to fill us in with us, all that is happening there. Maxwell, if you are there, tell us what's more. Well, um, Pius, yes, indeed, it is day two of um, uh, the Joy News, the Ecobank Joy News Habitat Fair, which is taking uh, place here. Yesterday was the um, was the launch. Um, even as at early this morning, we can see, you know, a number of people, you know, walking in here to interact with our exhibitors um, who are here right now. The foyer of the Accra International Conference Centre. This foyer has been transformed into a one-stop shop for everything um, housing. And the good news also is that um, patrons who are coming here are getting free consultation from um, our exhibitors uh, you know, who are here. Many of them have been interacted with, are excited. that Joy News put together uh, the Habitat Fair. Let me speak to one of the um, ladies from Virtual Security um, Africa, yeah. VSA. Tell us, um, how is it going so far? I know a lot of patrons are coming here because you have what? You, you, you giving out some gifts, you know, oh, a yes. raffle and all Oh, yes. That. So just like every year we do, this year we are doing it better because we're having a live draw. A live as, draw. Yes, okay. like a raffle. So we understand mm -hmm. that... Um, Maxwell Abbott, uh, we shall be going there as and when uh, we do have more updates from that event. And that's it for the business segment on Joy News Desk with me, Pius Kujo Baka. Students and well wishers, join us for an unforgettable day as Presec marks its 85th anniversary with a grand speech and prize giving day hosted by the Odadia 98 year group under the theme Building Upon a Legacy of Excellence, Developing Holistic Values Driven Change Agents. Chaired by Mr. James Boating, 2018 National Best Farmer and Odadia 78. The event starts at 10 a.m. on the 25th of November 2023 at the newly built ceremonial grounds. Speakers for the day will include Dr. Delali Fiagbe, head of psychiatry at UGMS and Mr. Kwabna Asantipoku, Country Director of British International Investment, both proud of Dadia 98. Our guest of honor is Dr. Yao Oseyuducho, Minister of Education, with Dr. Ofori Sapo and Right Reverend Professor Joseph Obri Yabuamante, gracing the event as special guests. Mark your calendars 25th November at the Presec Ceremonial Grounds. Oh, come longer, join us as we celebrate 85 years of excellence. Brought to you by the Odadia 98, Illuminator with the Bemos Lumen. A nation that honors its heroes is worth dying for. After months of rigorous contests for recognition in the regions and districts, the maiden edition of the Ghana Health Service Excellence Awards 2023. The grand finale comes off at the Grand Arena, Accra International Conference Center. 
Join us, celebrate, and honor our hardworking health professionals. Date November 29, 2023. Our special guest of honor, Her Excellency Mrs. Rebecca Akufuado, First Lady, Republic of Ghana. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., there'll be an exhibition, free health screening, blood donation, and public lectures. 6 p.m., arrival in style, and at 7 p.m., the main awards event begins. For sponsorship, contact 244 125314 or 0543. 726 406. Ghana Health Service Excellence Awards, celebrating our heroes, our lifeline. Driving a taxi in Accra is like watching DSTV. The drama is the Uber Biwa. Last time, my passenger cried in my car, sir. Hey, she be pushing her papa. DSTV, the Uber Biwa. Another one. My child gets so many gifts, and that definitely includes the best of Christmas cartoons. Plus, it keeps her occupied whilst I get things done. We watch the Premier League on Super Sports, like we are in a stadium. Rashford was in an offside position, but he wasn't interfering with play. And Bruno score. This Christmas, dear, entertainment galore on DSTV. The contents just go over you. Dial star seven five nine hash to reconnect or stay connected now. Your day is never dull when you tune into Joy Prime. Wake up to Prime Morning on weekdays as Rosling, KMJ, and Asiedua kickstart your day with breakfast of issues. The entire explains Sarkodia can promise after the Grammy absence. Stay informed with our news updates, sports coverage, all interlaced with captivating novella series. Sandwiching the thrilling telenovelas is our comprehensive news at 7. Unwind with Sports Zone, Mondays at 9 p.m., BMPS Show, Friday at 9 p.m. and groove to the turn up general selections at 10 p.m. on weekdays. The weekend is packed with loads of excitement from kids' programs to captivating talk shows. Stay tuned for action packed movies from Monday to Sunday and many other exciting shows only on Joy Prime. Joy Prime, your ultimate experience. Thank you so much for staying with me, Bernice Abubaydu Lansa, on this edition of News Desk. That'll be it for today, but there's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. Thanks for your company. Once again, do stay with us. We are your most credible news source. I'm back at 12 with the news.